Je suis un char. Well, that's it. The new assault weapon, the bipodded carbine, the ribby roll is probably the closest thing you're going to get to a traditional carbine or assault rifle in Battlefield 1. It's for the assault class. It has no class level requirement, but it does have a assignment in order to unlock it. The first of the assignment is that you have to get 50 kills with the Automatico factory piece of cake not too hard to get 50 kills with one of the most popular guns in the game after you get 50 kills with the automatico you then have to get 20 headshots with the mp18 optical now the second part of the assignment is frustrating to say the least simply because the mp18 optical is a terrible weapon to try and get headshots with it's got way too much bullet spread it's not particularly accurate in general so getting headshots with it is going to be difficult plus it does so little damage that you could get two headshots in a row and then wing them in the arm or something and get a kill and it won't count as a headshot kill. Now at the moment there's only one variant of the Ruby Rollies. It has a bayonet on by default. I take that off for better recoil control and then it has iron sights or the buckhorn sights and then magnification options. Now, despite the weapon really looking like a fledgling assault rifle, the statistics don't really set it that far apart from some of the other stuff available to the assault class. The MP18 is probably the closest thing in relation to this weapon. They both fire at 550 rounds per minute, and they both do 23 damage maximum. If you're familiar with the MP18, you've used it a lot, then you'll know the fastest speed at which you can down somebody with this weapon. It's not a particularly quick kill and that can be an issue if you're relegated to close quarters but this weapon does give you a bit more accuracy and long range potential than the traditional smgs for its slightly increased ranged effectiveness it does give up some of its hip fire accuracy not a whole lot but you're not going to want to necessarily hip fire away with this weapon at medium ranges or some of the ranges you would with the other smgs it's still an option in extreme close quarters but you're going to want to ads most of the time it also has a reduced magazine capacity of 25 rounds versus, say, the MP18's 32 rounds. Then again, the Automatico also has 25 rounds, so it depends which SMG you're comparing it to. Now, along with the attached bipod, which is an interesting addition with this weapon, giving you some uh, weird options at further ranges. If you have a stationary target, you can go prone and uh, hammer them with a bunch of really accurate shots quick enough to the point where once they start moving, they're probably already dead. It also has a minimum damage of 15, which is a bit higher than the other SMGs in the game, which have a minimum damage of 13.5. So it's going to be doing a tiny bit more damage at extreme ranges. If you can find a waist high wall during a, a combat sequence you can deploy your bipod instantly for an added bit of accuracy and window sills all that kind of stuff factor in here so if you can plop this thing out on a windowsill uh, you gain basically a bit of ranged effectiveness with this weapon which is pretty nice and and a really interesting option to give to the assault class considering that in pretty much every battlefield game, the support class or the class with the machine guns have traditionally been the only classes with bipods. Well, and snipers as well, but sort of a different effect. Since the assault class has been so limited with what it can use at further ranges, this is pretty much the only option it has to extend its actual primary weapon out at further ranges. So it really is sort of the longest range assault weapon available, and it's still decent in close quarters. That being said, it's probably one of the least effective, extremely close range weapons available to the assault class. Even the MP18, which has the same rate of fire, does benefit from better hip fire accuracy, where this one you're probably going to be more inclined to try and aim down sight a lot of the time, reducing your motion 
mobility. So shotguns, uh, the MP18, and of course the Automatico are going to easily out damage this weapon in close quarters. And that can be a pretty tough pill to swallow, and I was hoping that the ranged accuracy of this weapon would be a little bit more impressive since that's where this gun seems to be sort of geared at being more effective, sort of a medium range assault weapon. But it's not really that accurate overall unless you have the bipod deployed. So its ranged effectiveness is still pretty limited, a little bit further than your average SMG, but not by much. So it gives you sort of a weird realm in which this gun is going to be more effective than other weapons out there. Also, I've only been able to test it out on the Soissons map, and this map is vehicle intensive and mostly long range. Now, if you can bring it into the city, you can kind of get that medium or close range combat. But in general, this was not the best test environment for this weapon. A lot of rage inducing moments getting killed by tanks and airplanes over and over and over again, just trying to get some good infantry kills. So I do look forward to testing out this gun more on infantry oriented maps and seeing how I can make use of it at medium range. There's no question about it though, it does have the problem of just always running into that automatico and always getting out damaged. I think DICE really kind of messed up the assault class weapon balance by making the automatico so effective. They could have reduced the damage per shot or increase the damage per shot for the other SMGs to try and balance them out a little bit more, but the Automatico damage per second just outdoes everything else in the SMG department by almost double, so there just isn't really much of a competition when it comes to effective weapons in close quarters, and this weapon certainly is not going to dethrone the Automatico. It's just an interesting sort of hybrid assault weapon that does remind me a lot of the traditional carbine or assault rifles from Battlefield 3 or Battlefield 4. It's just got that sort of Battlefield 1 uh, bullet pattern and inaccuracy effect going on, which is frustrating. Once you're, you know, five or six shots into a magazine, your shots are going to become way less accurate, even if you're aiming down sights perfectly at your enemy. And that's one of those things that's always been difficult to get your head around with Battlefield 1, is just the forced bullet spread with the weapons in this game. And despite this gun having a longer profile and traditional assault rifle design to it, um, the spread increase is the exact same as the other SMGs in the game, which in my opinion is too high. It just makes the gun too damn inaccurate. And that's always just been uh, one of my pet peeves of the way that the new weapons are designed in Battlefield. You just can't maintain the accuracy that you would like to, so even when you're full autoing on somebody that you're aiming at perfectly, you're going to see a lot of those shots miss. It also makes the headshot game a little bit less viable with this gun. Sure, you can aim for the head with the iron sights if you would like to, but as your spread increases, you're going to end up hitting a lot less shots in general, so it probably makes more sense to aim upper center mass. Hopefully, some of your spread will hit them in the head, but uh, it's just just not going to be one of those precision weapons unless of course you've got that bipod deployed but i think dice is putting a little bit too much stock in the usefulness of that bipod as how often as an assault player are you going to be going prone and using that bipod to try and deal with targets at further ranges the answer is not often you're either going to get sniped or uh, just not find yourself in a situation where it makes sense to go prone or have enough time to go prone because generally speaking this is an alarm range weapon you don't have a long range class so when you see somebody in close quarters you're not going to dolphin dive and bipod them down with super accurate fire you're going to get owned in that situation if you try that so as much as i like the bipod i, I don't think i'm going to be using it as much as i would like to overall uh, anyway, I think I need to test this gun more on infantry oriented maps um, and really just kind of hone in on it and focus in on it. But uh, the underlying factor with this gun, if you are a hardcore player and you want something truly amazing for the assault class, is that the damage per second is limited because of that 550 round per minute rate of fire and 23 maximum damage. It's never going to be doing more damage than the MP18, and that's almost half the damage that the automatic puts out per second so it, it's not going to be a heavy hitter a competitor for like best gun for assault class but it is an interesting weapon
weapon. I'm glad it's in the game and hopefully DICE will think about maybe tweaking it to making it a little bit more effective at medium range, at least in the accuracy department. Anyway, that wraps it up for today's weapon review of the Ruby Rollies 1918 Factory. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.